What up, this is Ramash Kring covering Movies TV and Entertainment and here's my review of Netflix's new documentary series, Sins of Our Mother. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. Let's rock this. Oh man, here we go again. Another round of documentary from director Sky Borkman. If that name sounds familiar, it's because Sky Borkman is the same woman who gave you Girl in the Picture and I Just Killed My Dad. Two recent popular Netflix crime docus that got everybody buzzing. And as I've mentioned this to you before, it seems that Sky is on some sort of a mission to call out or to put a spotlight on bad parents. And this is the latest in that unofficial string of topic. Now, if you don't remember the Lori Vallow case, don't beat yourself up. Sure, it was the talk of the town a few years back, but then COVID pandemic hit and took up the news cycle. But anyway, as of now, Lori and her husband Chad stand accused of allegedly murdering Lori's kids, one of whom was autistic. So, Sins of Our Mother basically gives you a comprehensive account of not just the context, but also the events leading up to the kids being missing and their ultimate tragic fate. Once again, Sky Borgman nails it in covering all the grounds, while simultaneously emphasizing the emotional devastation that's caused by negligent, self-centered parenting. I mean, my god, man. In a world where it seems unfathomable that any parent could harm their child, unfortunately, there are these few who manage to do it because they put themselves ahead of their child's well-being. And that makes me sick to my stomach. Sins of Our Mother is grim, it's disturbing, it's heartbreaking. And it's also an indictment of mental illness and the perversion of Christian faith in our society. Directed by Sky Borgman, in Sins of Our Mother, Lori Vallow was known to friends and family as devoted mother of three, a loving wife, and a woman of God. But over the past three years, something went very wrong. Now Lori is in jail, waiting to stand trial for conspiracy to commit murder and first-degree murder in connection with the deaths of her fourth husband, her fifth husband's wife, and her two youngest children. For the first time, Lori's surviving son, Colby, steps forward to provide exclusive insight into his family's backstory as well as their present tense narrative as Lori faces justice. At the heart of this three-part series is a single burning question. How did a seemingly normal woman become the most notorious mother in America? Yes, there are a total of three episodes. The first two episodes run about an hour long, while the third or the final episode is a lot shorter, mainly because it focuses on the outcome or the courtroom trial, which, believe it or not, is still to be continued because they haven't gotten yet to the conviction or the sentencing. Anyway, as I mentioned in the synopsis, at the center of the story is Colby, who is Lori's grown son, speaking to the camera, telling us, the audiences, about his and his siblings' upbringing, with their mom jumping from one husband to the next, and on to the next, and on to the next. Look, no judgment to single moms out there who want to find that next man who could be a father to their kids. So you do you, boo. But Lori takes it to a whole other level of insane. It's kind of like an addiction to her. You don't have to be a psychologist to sense that there's something off there. That this is not just some void that she's trying to fill. But the element that haunts me more on top of all that is Lori's obsession with the end times prophecy. And apparently she finds her latest husband, Chad, to be her spiritual equal, while the others, including her kids, are now on this weird ranking of evil from a scale of light to bad, meaning you are now a zombie because darkness has taken over you that you are not yourself anymore. I mean, this is cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. <laughs> <laughs> and director Sky Borkman does a fantastic job of illustrating that madness without having to create something from scratch. All that Sky did is use their words against them, their own beliefs against them. Hell, even the cheesy animation is from an actual archive from their church. Now, hearing Lori speak 
in this religious nut job language is scary to me because believe it or not, I used to come from a similar conservative Christian ideology. Maybe not exactly the same, maybe not quite as extreme, but the whole 144,000 scenario and all the other stuff mentioned on this docu are something that I'm familiar with. And trust me, when those ideas are deeply embedded in your head, it's really difficult to deprogram or to unwire it. What truly strikes at the jugular about director Sky Borkman's documentaries, especially this latest one, is that they truly highlight lives lost, innocence lost, families lost, where at the end of it, all you can think of is, man, these kids didn't get to have a childhood. They didn't get to grow up, and now they're gone. It really underlines how unfair life is to some, to no fault of their own, and all because they happen to find themselves under the care of somebody who clearly is in no position to care for anybody. 